Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Environmental Coffee House um, with Craig Mead. Although I have to see if I can. There he is, the inevitable, whatever the word is, Craig Mead. But I want to get him on the left side and me on the right side. And there we go. Hi, Craig. I can't hear you, Craig. What happened? I'm just messing with you. Oh, you did it on purpose. Oh, this is going to be a good night, guys. Okay, well, I got, you know what? You're on the left and I'm on the right. Who cares? <laughs> we'll just do it this way. And let me move me over. So welcome, Craig. That was a little video about who Craig is. But what I really... um wanted to tell you guys is how I know Craig as um, Owl Nation Legal. And I always ran into Craig's comments on Collapsed Chronicles and Humpty Dumpty Tribe and I mean for years now and uh, Kevin on Black Bear News and other places. And what always struck me about Craig is that he's really smart but he's snarky, and I love his snark. <laughs> so I am going to give it over to Craig. You saw the video, a little bit about him, but really, you know, he ran for president and everything. So Craig, take it away, take it away. And he's on his boat now. He lives in a, in a sailboat, and I'll let you tell everything. Hi, Craig. Hi, Craigie. <laughs> Okay, talk so off, to us, baby, off, talk. First, first off, I wanted to say, after running for president, further left than Bernie Sanders, and not having a single progressive channel answer my plea, please, let me talk about climate. Let me talk about social welfare. Let me show Bernie and... AOC, who I admire greatly, what we could really do, not one of them would ever interview me. And here we are. It's funny because I am, quote unquote, the first climate focused presidential candidate. And I believe it's fitting that not only is my first interview, even though the election is over, there's still 2024, right. but not only is my first interview with a climate channel, but I consider it an honor and a privilege to be on the number one, the number one. I know you don't like to have have your 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 back size massage too much, Sandy, but you are. You present a warm, caring. I mean, Margot's a very caring person. She's a sweetheart. Explain you, Margot's methane. Margot is the methane lady. Uh, yeah, Margot's healing corner. She's a very yeah. sweet gal. She has got a ton of data. But you and Jennifer have created an ecosystem here, a, a, an online environment that is, it's warm. It's almost as if when people come and visit you, they're coming into a cafe, like their, their neighborhood cafe. Yeah, That's what they're coming like into my lair. <laughs> well, well, thank you. You like to, no, you, you do. You like to be. And, and isn't everybody in the doomosphere a little bit sardonic with the gallows humor and all that? And you do that. We are. And uh, But but you actually create a very warm environment. You know, absolutely. Oh, I think cool. you're a rock star the way you do. Oh, cool. You do. You do. Hey, and at least yeah. tonight I didn't have a cat scratch and my lip isn't bleeding like all over like Wednesday night where I was trying to do my stuff and constantly making everybody crazy with dabbing it. It's, it's all gone, folks. <laughs> Did you see that one? Oh my God! <laughs> um, no, what, what? Because I'm also a publisher. Uh, I usually catch everybody's videos two or three days after they're done, uh, like you. Uh, well, I start at about four or five in the morning, um, and I grab. I I go around the world. I I actually have a news cycle. I do the Al Jazeera, RT, move into Amy Goodman, uh, Democracy Now. Then I do an hour to Tom Hartman. Oh, uh, people call in, people call in around the, the country and they actually speak their minds. And I like Tom's show. Well, tell me something. What's your handle on Tom Hartman? I watch a couple times a week because I think oh, he's brilliant uh, and yeah. I learn from him. 
Yes, you learn on that. And then from, but while that's going on in the morning, if you just sit there and veg listening to podcasts, your life goes to hell. And so after the Amy Goodman thing, or sometimes while she, she, she comes on live at, at five, uh, live at five in the morning. Um, after that, I start getting the coffee going. I get the day going. Then when Tom comes on, I'm usually into my first project. And I have two choices being on a sailboat. I'm either up in the bow of the sailboat where I have my computers and this American flag. And I got Kuka Beats for your show right here. See? I see. There's a flare gun back here somewhere in all various shades. I thought I'd wear my captain shades and my captain hat. But um, <laughs> I can take them off. I can also wear my grand, granny, granny well, glasses Well, you know, a, you can tell a lot by the if, eyes. I don't know if this is good for you. Good. It's better. okay. Is that better? Yeah, whatever you want. Because you're the one that's going to be looking at the graphics as we go through them. And we're going to, and, and we have a little graphic show uh, uh, Craig sent me and... Um, Oh, he's going, I'm going to put the graphic up and he's going to, he's going to comment on it. But just tell us a little bit about you that goes with the video I made. Um, just a little bit, you know, give us the, the little spiel here. Okay. We were not going to go all the way back. Uh, we're started about 95. I sold all my houses. I had houses by the beach in Southern California uh, I had a computer store down there. I had software clients. I had the largest computer store south of Irvine, California. In Were you crazy, Eddie? <laughs> uh, and and when I sold it, I spent all the money with my charming wife uh, touring California and surfing every spot. And then we moved on to Native American land up by Klamath. Uh, I don't know if many people know what Beautiful. Klamath Beautiful. Yeah, my brother lives in Oregon for, for over 40 years. Yeah. It's, it's beautiful territory, and, mm -hmm. I, and I, I made friends with the tribal chief. Her name was Ethel. She owned the general store. And if, once you're friends with Ethel, uh, as long as you're a gentleman, you can stay on tribal land. If you're not a gentleman, Ethel will tell them to get rid of you. Okay. And, uh, and then I moved down to San Francisco. The dot boom was hit, happening in 96, 97. I made a lot of money. I run a free PCs for kids program. I gave away a lot of money during that I period. I saw away that. Free yeah. You can go to freepcsforkids.com. We've been doing that since 1983. And, wow. Um, and, then, and then when the dot bomb hit, uh, my charming wife and I were friends, but she said, Craig, she tried living on a sailboat for two or three years at that point. She said, I love you, but I need to get dirt under my fingernails. Some people got to have that. And she said, I know you love living on a sailboat at this harbor um adios amigo and that was fun really we, we still, we're still friends we're still friends not a problem she's a great gal um and and we only had a doberman who i i said here's how we find out where the dog wants to go uh we put the dog in the middle because bella would sit she was a good dog and then we're both going to call her at the same time and wherever she goes to we'll try it two or three times and see if the dog's confused and she, uh, Bella, Bella came to me three times, so she became my dog until she was older anyway. And so um, so as soon as I got rid of the wife, I got a bigger boat. That's how it works for men. And I recommend that every woman, when she get throw out the guy, get a bigger house or at least uh, you know, an add-on or something. And, um, and then I moved out at Anchor. And uh, there's a, some rainbow shots at craigmead.com, question mark, home or my home, something like that. And you can go look up Craigmead, uh, M-E-A-D.com to see my personal life. Uh, so I got very poor when the dot boom or the dot bomb hit. And one of my friends at the dock and a neighbor, NASA physicist, Jerry Baruki, uh, he sails to the Arctic every year, every year. He sails and his goal is to get as close as he can to the North Pole. And he was my teacher and my mentor and many, for many things. And I was his, uh, guy who went up and down his mast, you know, rigging his lines and helping him prepare for his voyages. I was the guy on the dock with the fresh vegetables and the, uh, when he got back, cause he hadn't eaten anything fresh for, you know, weeks. And, um, and he taught me all about aviation, aeronautics. He said, you're going to need a wind generator out there. Uh, let me show you how to make them. So if you go to the wind website, you can learn how to carve a cheap, inexpensive wooden wind generator. 
And that rig got, gave me all the power I need for one person for $200. Takes to build one less than that, really about 120 bucks, and plus a battery. I'll get all the links up for you, so everybody can. Okay. We'll get the links okay. in the anybody show notes. Can do this. I, so I began teaching that class until 0304, and I was hand carving blades. I sold I sold 406 blades on eBay, and made no power tools, beautiful urethane finish. Jerry taught me to make these within a hundredth of an inch, but typically they were within about a 64th. They were balanced, and I taught classes where people could make them at home themselves. They didn't have to buy from me. 406 of those I sold, not one single return on eBay. I'm very proud of that. Uh, then my friend said in 0506, gas was pushing 150 a barrel, uh, crude oil. And uh, my friend said, Craig, you used to design systems for the nuclear industry, for hospitals, all this other stuff. Why don't you study wind? How are you? have got this wind generator site, you know, small wind. And I said, okay. So my friends all chipped together. I went to Manhattan for three months and trained with GE Wind. And I was a huge, and I still am, a huge wind proponent, except for some things over the, the course of the last 15, 20 years. I've changed my mind a little bit. And we can get into that in a second. And, and these are things that most people at this channel are aware of. The advantages and disadvantages of wind power or solar or hydroelectric, let's say. And, you know, there's there are some real disadvantages that maybe we can avoid, you know, you know and we'll see. But uh, so 06, 07, I built a wind farm company across the United States. We had uh, people in all the windy counties, Midwest, California, all around the world. Uh, we, we started getting contracts. I did a pretty good job building that. Then the crash happened. We were on the desk of Goldman Sachs and Lehman Brothers and everything tanked. And uh, and I said, I got to do something. I'm going back to software. So in 2010, I went back to software. Did you say everything tanked? Everything tanked? Is that in what you said? In, two, in 2008, everything uh, tanked. Well, I think it warrants the uh, flush of the day. I think that was the perfect segue. There you go. You got it. You're the esteemed flush of the day. So I said, I got to go back to software. I made a lot of money in software. I, I, I would love to do wind, but I got to eat. I, at one point, I was putting hot coffee in a peanut butter jar, stir that around. That was my protein for the day, you know. And I, I, I published two Linux distributions. I put those online. They're, they're very, it runs very fast. It's a very secure system. I, I've done a lot of balance sheet work for large corporations, and I want something very secure uh, that doesn't re require Microsoft or Apple or whatever. And I did that, and then one of my friends from Hewlett Packard asked me what I was working on at that time. I was working on the encryption modules for the Linux. We ended up patenting that. That's an artificial intelligence quantum computing encryption and attack detection system. To get the quantum computing at, uh, four claims of quantum computing, I had to teach the patent examiner in Washington D.C. how quantum computing worked, and I had to make a slideshow for him—a little like a twelve-year-old kind of sixth-grade slideshow—and we okay. got those four claims. And then, in um, that that was 2013, 2014, seven years we worked on that, and then we start now we're integrating it into products. Um, and recently I met a very wealthy man. I live in a billion dollar neighborhood here in, in Half Moon Bay. Um, and, uh, and I met a wealthy man who actually cried when he watched one of the videos that I made for the presidential campaign uh, because it talks about extinction. He's got right. kids. And he, and he told me, he said, this was very recently, so we're all, all the way to modern day now. He said to me, what can I do? And he's, he's an old, crippled, may not live a long time kind of guy. And I, he said, what can I do to fix this? And I said, well, none, none of us can do, uh, can fix this by ourselves. You know, you can recycle, you can get an EV, you can make wind generators. Like I yeah. live on less than one gallon. I live on less than one gallon of petroleum per year. Wow, that's amazing. And, and but I still carpool, right. but the guy's going, the guy's going that way anyway. So I'm. A little bit of gasoline added to it, but he's going that way anyway. The only time I go somewhere is if someone's going already. I try to do that. And and the point is, so let's say everybody used one gallon of petroleum per year and made all their own electricity. I cook with electricity. I have wind and solar and all that. 
I also have the ability to cook with fossil fuels, propane, diesel, gasoline, whatever. Right. Um, and there are times, I have to admit, I confess, I cheat now and then. If there's no sun for a prolonged period, many days, which doesn't happen often, but once or twice a year it might. And Where there's no are. wind, once or twice a year it might. I, I might fire up a fossil fuel-based stove and cheat a little, but it's a little quirk thing. Anyway, so... This rich guy says, what can I do? And I said, well, you can recycle, you can get an EV, you can teach your children, right? Like that song goes. Uh, teach, teach your children, your children well. well. Yes. Yeah. Right. And I said, and you can teach your neighbors or, I don't know, um, how much money do you want to put into what kind of project and products? Uh, I have a friend who did the no dapple uh, standing rock thing. Oh, yeah. Out, out. We were big into that. Big and he he, uh, he offered to let us host concerts in Iowa and the Midwest, and he would give me all the sound, mm -hmm. all the lights, and all the bands. Now, that's a pretty good deal for free. Wow! If we run an echo if we run an echo festival, and so I want people to think about uh, how bad the farmers have been hit thanks to that guy who was president. You know the tariffs and everything, and the soybean problems in China. Farmers have been hit. Farmers are getting hit by climate catastrophes. Farmers, I mean, the ice, I don't even know how this Texas ice thing is going to play into the future. You know? And so, uh, but at the end of the day, that brings you up current. Well, since 2000 up to 2020, I've published over 500 domains. In 2011, I think I was at the peak. I had 300 of them. I got it pared down to about 200 now, mostly climate, infrastructure, energy, engineering yeah and, educa and education for kids do you have to I pay have for to all those about, domains yeah I, I all yeah i pay for the domains wow. i pay for the server all that in 2018 i think it was 2017 2018 i saw this little girl on a sidewalk in sweden with this cardboard sign yeah and i said wow i said well that kid's got courage and i couldn't <laughs> read the writing but i looked up it was School strike for climate. Nobody yes. ever heard of her. And it, and it was Christmas. And I said, and I work with kids. I've taught thousands of kids in our labs. And I and I love kids with courage. I know. I saw all the videos. So I said to her on Twitter, I said, "Hey, I built you a website. Go change the world." And she sent me back a little heart and a thumbs up on Twitter. Yep. And I guess that means I guess that means thank you in, in fifteen year old talk. Uh, I don't know. Um, and within, I, I know we can't swear, but within FN, three, four months, she was lecturing the United Nations. In another month or two, she made the cover of Time. And by the end of the year, she made Time Magazine Person of the Year 2019. That was Greta Thunberg. Yeah. And now Greta, Greta does not communicate with me. All videos on the website. I, I told her early on. You don't have to do a damn thing. I run a lot of domains. I'm going to put videos up and some of your bios and some pictures. And if you see something you don't like, tell me and I'll take it down. That's the only thing. That's the only thing she knows about that website. She may say, well, I have no control over it because she doesn't really. But I, did, I just wanted to give it to her. And when I see a video of hers that she's done, I put it up there. If I see something like the front page right now has a, a audio of her... Uh, her bio, her speaking about her time at the UN and all, all that stuff. So, and there's a ton of videos there. You want to go to Greta Thunberg dot org and Greta Thunberg dot com. I own them both, and or she owns. Well, whatever. I I run them. So here's the thing. Uh, there's a bunch of websites, and we could get into all of those. There's the presidential campaign mead twenty twenty dot org, which is yeah. really obsolete. I think I lost that one. I'm. Well, I was Hang supposed to have you on back then, and uh, I never got it together. But you know, I, I, you didn't I, you know, win. It's not you're not the only <laughs> you're not the only one. Like I said, every progress I hammered the progressive channels. I even hammered a couple people here that I will remain nameless that I do love because not just because I steal their videos and put them into my videos because they make great reports. Wow. Okay. Well, I guess I sh if I'm going to say that, I can say Kevin and Sam both have videos at my thing. But both of those guys blocked me because 
we're we're, we're all cudge cudge mudgeons. Is that the right word? Curmudgeons. It's like it's like yeah, three guys who can't sit at a poker table long enough before one of them says, "I'm going home to my wife," and the other two look at him and say, "Good luck with that," you know. <laughs> so anyway, the point is, okay. the point is, um, the point is, uh, 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 Kevin was at the L.A. Fair thing when Greta was there, and I so wanted him to run for, I wanted Kevin to run for mayor of Los Angeles, to be honest. I bugged him about that for a while. Wow. wouldn't do it. I, I think he would be better. I wanted Kevin to go over to Jimmy Doors, who lives not far from him, and, and get this climate stuff on the thing. And he couldn't do it. You know, Kevin, Kevin's a guy with a kid, or I don't know, maybe two kids. He's got a dad there. He's got his podcast. He's got to eat, work. And asking him to do more than that, you know, ask anybody to do more than they're already doing. And they're like, you know, dude, no. And then Sam, who I love dearly, I think Sam, I don't know if he's really your brother I, or, or if he's just he's your He's not really my brother. He's just like a brother. Right, he's well, completely different so, off. Yeah, he's completely different. Hambone, little tail, Sam Mitchell, although I know that's his evil twin. Oh, I brought something for him. I brought, he's, now he's better at this than I am, but. So there, that one's for Sam. We're not going to do any long songs. He's better at it anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's good. Sam, I have said, that, and he blocked me, but I have said this repeatedly. Sam named it Collapse Chronicles, and he has, uh, my opinion, Sam has done the best job of interviewing the most, what you would call the great mind. He's like the David Frost. Oh, the Collapse of, Chronicles? Uh, tri- uh, all he those? Has, he has interviewed amazing. everybody. He yes, has interviewed I think has. Any, any scientist. Any scientist who doesn't want to go on Sam's uh, thing, although he's not really doing that anymore, any scientist who doesn't want to go on Sam's thing, I think is just mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah, Sam, Sam is a rock star when it comes to having chronicled that. But he blocked me for two jokes. I said, I'm sorry, I got, I got a, a twisted sense of humor. One time he was going crazy trying to make some coffee and he couldn't find a match. He was in a trailer somewhere, uh, you know, how he likes to travel around. He couldn't find a match, and I'm laughing. There was a coffee percolator right on the counter, and I'm going <laughs> like Sam. I'm trying to type Sam, Sam, get the percolator. No, so I laughed at him. I said, "Dude." And then another time, he was saying that GM name that he never says. We won't yeah. say it, you know. Anyway, and and instead of saying the GM name at a certain point in an article, he went, "Dude, dude," you know, like dude. the sensor beat. Yes, he does that. And I, and I said, Sam, Sam, you sound like a cartoon character there. And that was it. He was done with me. Bang. Out came the meat cleaver. You're blocked. And later, it took him about a year, he bragged that I'm the only person he's ever blocked. So Sam's a nice guy. But I wanted to ask you, question, Sandy, what is it? Why is it some people like me and some people really don't like oh, me? Oh, let's ask it? Forest Dweller. He's out here. You already got some detractors. <laughs> why would people like you and why would they not? Okay, well, I find you funny, uh, entertaining, and I don't know. What do you think? Others might find you what? Well, I, I, I'm pretty sure I know. I know. Here, Here's a couple reasons. Okay, One, and I'm looking uh, up something. Okay. An oil spill. I want to, if there's an oil spill that's happening now, you talk. Let me look that up. All right. So, so I worked for two judges, a federal judge and a judge pro tem back in my 20s, all the way into my early 30s. Um, and before that, I was a pretty crazy teenager. We don't have to get into all the crazy things I did, but just needless to say, uh, no convictions. That was a good one. And uh, uh, when I started working for the judges, I learned what honesty means and what that means, not necessarily don't be honest and cruel. And sometimes I have been cruel in some of the chats and oh, forums, Jesus Christ. but the, but the, you know, I've been, I've been nasty. I, I've, I've curled a few mud balls here and there, mm-hmm. but be honest, be honest and see if the person you're having a conversation with and be honest. And I stole that from you, Sandy. Do you remember when you did the, the thing with the time cover magazine says is truth dead? I don't know if you remember that video. You did that. Yes. Well, I, I took that from you. I incorporated it in one of my videos. And there's a lot of people. Oh, some wait a minute. Say, Are you sure that was me? I'm not so sure. Yeah, yeah, well, well, it's got your voice over. So, you know, oh, okay. there's only one. Yeah, All right. Anyway, must so, have been me. 
Is Truth Dead Time Magazine cover. And, um, and, and what I tend to do, and I also I used to do a lot of depositions. I would sit there and videotape them and transcribe yeah, all that. Yeah, that was so in one of your look, lives as in, in the legal profession. Yeah, I did investigations. Uh, this was for a very wealthy Laguna Beach uh, office. And uh, I, used to, I did a lot of battered women, molested kids, and uh, uh, adult stuff. seniors getting stalked by some crazy person trying to steal their property, some of that. But the point is, when, when, when I watch somebody unable to come to a logical conclusion, here's the evidence, here's what's happening. We could look at our congressman. Joe Biden, for instance, is trying to give us some sort of green infrastructure and these long time frames for getting things done. And we all know that when a new administration comes in, Joe Biden's going to find that all of his plans got raced. The new administration's in, and we're praying to God that the new administration follows through on the same schedule and we're all praying to God that we don't boil the planet before all of these green new deals get done. And most of the people, I would well. say the majority of them, the majority of the people in this uh, environment, not just your channel, but Kevin, Sam's and a million others, uh, Manga Bay, all, the majority of people think that we're probably too stupid and stubborn and, and dysfunctional and uncoordinated uh, uh, disjointed uh, to fix this and that's our biggest fear and so and I deal with hardcore kids a lot of my students are from the project and they're at they have gang warfare going and I always try and tell them if you guys can unite together if you can work together instead of killing each other obviously your life would improve but so I bring him into the computer lab and I'll put two kids on the same bench who hate each other his, his brother killed my sister's best friend whatever and, um, and I'll put them on the bench and I'll say, you guys got to work together and I'll make them work together and make friends out of them. And that's kind of hard sometimes, but it works. And the same thing with the climate people. Um, Michael Mann, for instance, oh. has done some great things. He's got the hockey stick thing, mm -hmm. but he is so arrogant. He will not hold well, conversations he... with anybody that he's dismissed as having a We had a whole thing here people. because I got very taken back by, and I was offended, quite frankly, by being called climate porn or doom porn, doom porn. That was my beef, was the doom porn thing. I did a whole thing on it. Me and Jennifer did quite a few shows, and I did a whole video on it because we were upset. But he still fall, he clicks on my stuff sometimes on YouTube, on uh, Twitter. Not that I'm looking for anything. I just thought that he was, um, I, I thought it was a little overdone. I understand well, the premise. If, if I show up at anything Michael Mann's done, he immediately blocks me. He's quick, too. At first, wait, wait, wait. First, he sends me a nasty gram. Well, wait a minute. Then what name is he blocking you on? Well well, 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 let me just put it to you like this. When you send a nasty gram to somebody and in under 60 seconds you block them, that's a little bitch tactic okay that means you're not even going to give somebody 30 minutes or an hour to respond and this is just the truth if you send a nasty gram and then block that's a little bitch tactic in my opinion yeah. but so people like michael mann people like michael mann say uh that people like sam who say we're all gonna we might not make it or guy right. McPherson who says right who says we're not going to make it sooner than expected you know it's going to happen and um and then you come to Michael Mann, then you come to Peter Wadhams. And I love, I think we all love, the gentle spirit oh, and Peter the Wattams. depth of experience that Peter Wadhams. I mean, if there was a a climate uh, 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 unofficial king, wouldn't you pick the guy who has spent more time under the ice in submarines than just about any, you know, Peter knows ice, Yeah. you know? Yeah. That, he is like the, he's like the climate now, but forget Al Gore and and whatever. Peter Wadhams to me, and he's so gentle. He has such a wonderful sense yeah, of humor. Yeah, we enjoyed him. But and I, yeah, you got him. You got him. I think we Sam enjoyed got him too. it. It was enjoyable. Yeah, he did. He, he, you know he, what, Craig? We have to segue. We have to segue to our plan. Okay. To the graphics. All right. So, all right. So what I did, what I did, because I didn't know what to do, is I made a bunch of slides that goes through a lot of this stuff and so it wouldn't take up too much time i timed this so each one would take exactly 15 seconds and if 
if I say go, Sandy, then just hit the picture and it'll just go to the next one. Yeah, we're going to try this. Sandy. But first, I just wanted to bring up a little thing that um, somebody brought up about this pipeline leak. And this is definitely something that we have over, I think, on the Facebook page published on it. But it's getting bigger and bigger. And it's in North Carolina, folks. And uh, not a good thing. So we'll, we will be um, definitely on this channel we'll be keeping up with this okay guys we will i promise because this is exactly the kind of thing that we were we were um we were that's what we started on pipelines so but we're going to do this little experiment and uh let me just say hi to kate and um <laughs> she says i'm so disappointed that tom hartman eats a mile of Michael Mann's crap. Well, Tom is broadcasting the the the, the mainstream science uh, you know, science trope, you know, he's going to do that, but anyway, this is not to get four, into. I was a, I was I was a 4.0 student my whole life and I always was in science labs and other classes with a guy like Tom. And so I understand him. And I respect guys like that because it is their passion, almost their religion, to study and know and listen. And he does. He brings on uh, Republicans and Democrats alike, and he argues with them. He's usually right. I'm right, I'd say, 99% of the time. But every once in a while, when Tom gets an opinion about something, Jesus and he's in such a rough format with those phone calls he does, he doesn't get all of the information, and the next thing you know, he blows you off. He puts his foot down and says, no, this is the way it is, and he's wrong. Once in a while, and, and well, aren't we all? Everybody's once wrong. While. Once in a while, I make lots of wrong things. But when I'm on the show with Jennifer, it's always a teachable moment because if I'm thinking of something wrong, then others don't know either, and she educates us. All right, look, I'm going to get off this, but this colonial spill is something big, so we really have to. We're going to have to do this. All right, let's go to the slides, and um, okay, so. All I have to do is go this. You talk, go for it. All right. So I put up George Washington smoking weed here to start off this slide because if I was president, weed would be legal because George Washington got rich smoking and growing hemp. Next slide. All right. So this is me, Craig Mead. I was born and raised in Southern California in a barrio uh, near... Uh, East LA, five miles east of East LA, and uh, I've been a, a law clerk. I designed systems for the nuclear sector, medical, etc. And this is me playing piano for the whales and dolphins. There's an artist here who used to put grand pianos on the coastline, and anybody could come by and play. Oh, that's, that's where interesting. I live in the yeah. yeah, it was. It was you definitely and, uh, are California. This is this is Greta. We all know Greta. I just mentioned yep. her. You can click. You can, you can go ahead and go, go on. I'll click. Come on. Just push on the picture. All there right. And I also I also run the largest Paris Climate Accord website on the internet. It's got all your documents, documents for mayors to do it, uh, to get their stuff together. It's got technology there. And I know a lot of people think that the Paris Accord is bogus, but I think it was a great step for mankind. This is a COVID faces well, got website that I run for. All the healthcare nurses out there okay. uh, uh, that have lost their lives due to COVID, go ahead and go on. And I also run a, a website for kids that have been separated from their parents at the border where they can find their parents. And I, this is some of the website. Go ahead and go on. Interesting stuff. And I also run White House chat room where Republicans and Democrats get together. And I don't censor anybody. They can say whatever they want. I don't do you really do care. all of this I without say. help? Yes. Go ahead Holy and go on. Holy shit. I thought I was busy. I also have a, I also have an artificial intelligence blockchain voting application that uh, works for any election. You can do uh, uh, national elections, little ones, whatever. And uh, this is so that people can vote with their Android. And you have patents, have don't, don't you? I do. I have patents. I, I looked it up. Cab. They're all public. <laughs> I have a, a taxi cab company because I think the Uber and Lyft drivers are getting ripped off. And this one, they get to keep 100% of their money. Go ahead and go on. 
And I wanted to stop here and just take a breath. This, I've lived in forests. I like forest dweller can hate on me or joke with me or elbow me. That's okay, brother. Get in line. But let us all agree that if the forests uh, covered the earth, we'd be a lot better. These are my totem animals because I am a surfer. I've always loved the dolphin. Well, yeah, you're the California guy. There you go. And I, and I also have the owl uh, there, which has always been a totem. I also have a heron, which uh, stays on my kayak uh, all night long and fishes. Go ahead. Okay. Did it go? All um, right. Here we go. This is a popular. This is a famous population graph. It goes straight up to seven billion, and we all know that sometimes what goes up must come down. And we're all wondering: Is that going to happen this year? 10 years, 100 years, that's the big problem. Uh, yeah. the, this is the migration. These are the kids at the border, and this is the result of resource limitations we've talked about on these channel and other channels. Go ahead. Yes, yes. And this is the ice graphs. We don't have to dwell here. Every person watching this channel knows, knows. that we're about to get to the Blue Ocean event. Nick Humphrey uh, does fabulous work, and Nick said, he would contend a blue ocean event is occurring in certain areas region. Yes, he did. This and is he... the debt. Yes. While while the earth while the earth is having its resources ripped away and and this climate is changing, uh, people have this enormous amount of debt and and things are getting more expensive and yet wages are going down. As a result, yep. parents are at home working with their kids. And here's the big question: If people are so busy with their own lives, trying to keep it together. Guys like Kevin with his kids and his family and everything else, and this yes. mom right here. Mm -hmm. How do we expect these people to ignite and heal the planet? And then here's a drought map. When you they're so busy. We've all seen it. Like my kid. We've all seen them a million times. We have a climate crisis going on, but everyone is so busy and not united. No, it's a, it's a problem. Go ahead and go to the next one. Yep. And this is a world map. You can go to the next one. Everyone here has seen these a thousand times. This is a drought map for the world. We've seen him, you know, that, that going right. Paul Beckwith sure. does wonderful work. I yes, he that. does. Okay, and here, stop right here. Stop right here. These kids are pissed off, and I work with kids. And, and it, some kids are suicidal because of this. Greta is pissed off, you know, and I don't blame them. I don't blame them. We are dysfunctional. You can just click right past the burning earth. Doesn't matter. Click the kids. Click the burning earth. Everyone here knows about this stuff. It's just for drama. And now here's Dapple, the no Dapple. Uh, uh, no, rock. visuals Protesters are good. Chewed up by the dog, yep. you know, chewed up by the dog. They're protesting a pipeline. So yep. obviously uh, the, the First Amendment rights are a little twisted. Here's George Floyd. We all know what just happened to him. A lot of my kids that I teach are in the projects, black kids, uh, Latinos. And I, I mean, the, the funerals in the projects are horrific. It's a pandemic. It's an epidemic, you know. Oh, uh, this God. is some of the graffiti. Kids make art. Communities make art. And I happen to, uh, growing up in a neighborhood like this, I, I love this kind of art. So uh, go ahead. Oh, that's Heather Heyer. That's the law clerk, because I was a law clerk. That's a law clerk who was murdered at uh, Charlottesville. Oh, my God. When the Nazis were murdered. <laughs> okay. I put her here. Oh and here's the God. piece of shit. I can't kid. look at it. This is the actual scene. You can click past this. That's the car going into her. Okay, go ahead. One oh more. Oh my gosh, this is like a history. And these are the fine. These are the fine yeah. gentlemen who did it. And I don't care who you are as an American. If you want to be a Republican, if you want to be a Nazi, I, I, you know I got to think about how my father in World War II would have treated you. This is Netta. She was a musician in Iran. The United States isn't the only place that's messed up. She caught a stray bullet, or some people say they killed her for effect. Go ahead and go on. That's not a picture I dwell on. But that was Netta, a music student. Here's the homeless in America, uh, right down the street from Kevin, oh, yeah. right down the street from me. In, uh, right down San the street Francisco, from Fiesta Cranberry. She, Her friend, right down so the street from my daughter in Buffalo. So here's the point. A lot of stress is going. Here's a kid, a migrant kid, trying to get to uh, Greece. Go ahead and go on. We don't These want to These are good pictures, Greg. I'm, no, I'm really glad you no, set this up. Happening. And here's a Yemen, a kid in Yemen. And I hate to tell American kids, but this is our future. You know, the farmers out there are having a real hard time with droughts and some of this weather. This is our future. It's not 50 or 100 years. It's coming pretty quick. Go ahead. And this is another kid. A, I a grew up with these pictures. 
I remember in seeing Africa. these pictures in the 1970s and 80s. <sighs> go ahead and go on. I don't like dwelling on the sad stuff too much. Okay, this is a girl in our in Iraq who was in a car. Jesus with our, we've got to go get oil. We've got to go kill people. This girl was in her car with her entire family. Every one of them died except her when some American soldiers oh got trigger happy. Okay. And they, this is what, these are the kind of kids that we're going to create. That's, these are the kids we're going to create, just like African kids with machine guns, just like Arab kids with machine guns. We got plenty of, Kyle Rittenauer, we already got these kids in America. And this is a woman, uh, this was, by the way, time, tw uh, a photo of the year, or photo of the century, 20th century. Um, this woman from Afghanistan, her eyes always told They're me haunting. where we're going. If, if we don't clean up our shit, and here's that's a guy. That's 9 That's the World Trade Center. That's a, yeah, that's a, that's wow, a World Trade Center. We know, what uh... we know what happens when uh, things get too much to handle, and yeah. I don't want people to give up. I don't want people to be suicidal. I don't want people to give up on planet Earth. But I did make this website, 911-247-365.com, for the millennial, for the X-Gens and the Z-Gens, so they can actually read about the science and kind of joke about it sardonically. You know, there's in there. Wow. And people want answers. People want answers. Go ahead and click this. Mm -hmm. I was an engineer. I, I was an engineer, and I put these gears here so people understand it's a little simpler than just saying, and this is something Kevin says often, what if humans never went into the wildlife? They were just banned. Okay? And I understand that concept, but it's more complicated than that. And we need a direction that everybody can agree on. One of the things that's mm -hmm. very important, and it's not happening in Congress, is we need a direction everyone can agree on. And I really think AOC has given us kind of the general nudge in the right direction with the Green New Deal. And I was an engineer. Uh, this is me wearing the old Tyvek suit. I've designed systems for naval vessels, nuclear power plants, hospitals, HMOs, banks. Um, yeah. Some of the software that's destroying the planet I designed. I hate to say it, but that was before. Lovely. Okay, now here's a uh, flowchart. Just uh, this is a common engineering tool. And I think that everybody should learn this, Sandy. You and I played a little flowchart game, didn't we, the other yes, night? We did. Yes, yes, we did. Yes, we did. And I have my paper. Uh, I'm writing on it and keeping my notes on it. Yep. And I believe I believe that we can have 100% free universal health care, and we can fund that with the royalties from energy using zero-emission synthetic fuel that we can produce. We don't. Okay, and what is this here? Oh, and this just is a slide that says, yeah, I used to work for... Judges, and I'm the only presidential candidate who passed national law unanimously. I, I legislated, I wrote the law, worked with some congressmen, and then there's just a, a picture of what an asshole I can be uh, back when I was in my late 20s, early 30s. So I need to blow past that. You have the asshole gene. I put it in the video in the I opening do. I video. Have the asshole gene. Jake! Now, this is Jake Huger. <laughs> Jenk Uger, head of the Young Turks, and I love Jenk. I, he says he's the best. I don't think so. I think Anna, his cohort, is better than he is. But he's good. <laughs> yeah. I was a linebacker. Jenk is a linebacker, and he's just a little bullheaded. But he's actually good. He's done a lot of good things. He got AOC into Congress. A lot of people have knocked her, but I think she's done a fabulous job. I'm not going to knock her. Even if she I'm played. not playing that political even bullshit game. I'm not. I'm not knocking her. Oh my I, God! I I'll knock her job. all day long. Where I will knock her. Where's the toilet? Where's the toilet? Where's yeah. the toilet? Where's Should the we toilet? flush the toilet Where again? Yeah, because Where's she just flush? she needs to retire. It's time to go, yeah. Nancy. No kidding. Okay. Time oh, to I go. Didn't, oh, that's a mistake. I didn't mean to put that in there. I'm sorry if that t-shirt offends anybody. <laughs> it doesn't offend me. It's my show. Yeah, I like right, so AOC. AOC. I think she's I trying threw, to do something, and I, I don't like when they say because, she's bought off. Yeah, I threw AOC in there because for all of her faults, she's still the best A student we got in Congress. And she wears so we can great red lipstick. <laughs> and I put all the other people that we love. There's Tulsi there. I thought Tulsi had great potential. There's Bernie and Liz. And if she, go ahead and go on. Yeah, but Tulsi got messed up by the whole thing. The, yeah, the she whole... did. She made, she made a few... Well, Tulsi's a surfer, so I get now. Here's my a little artwork <laughs> I did. This is, this is evolution wow. walking on one side and a mermaid on a rock, uh, edging, uh, uh, waving them off the cliff. And I, I, one of my websites it says human extinction, the human experiment, or something. And this is just blueprints to say, yeah, I've worked with 
designing, I, I designed a, a, up to $3 billion national infrastructure plans for heads of state and the United Nations. Well, you did I, a I, lot I did in your life in a lot, you One know, of my partners. in how and, many And now wait, Frank Zappa, Frank Zappa says, scientists say hydrogen is the most abundant substance in the universe. I disagree, says Frank Zappa. I think stupidity is the most <laughs> abundant substance and it has a longer shelf life. Now, here's yeah. a wind map. Here's, here's a wind map. Here's a wind map. And we could solve all of the world's energy problems with just this map if we could mine all the steel and the copper and all that stuff to make that. We could employ everyone around the world as but we make this transition. But mining is horrible, Craig. Aren't you into the green, I know, bright I know. green I, lines? I didn't say we're going to do that. There's another solution. And, and and when you come up with a solution, it should be elegant. It should actually work within the confines. We all know if we tried to mine or destroy the planet. So there are solutions to save our planet without doing that. Mine and asteroids. And these are some of the kids. <laughs> That's what this they're one saying. Of my, one of my kids. It's one of my kids' labs. That's me in the center there. You can go on. Uh, yeah, I like that. Uh, and, uh, Very interesting uh, part of Well, there's of another life. one. There's a better one. There's a better one coming up. Okay, now, uh, I can't see if this is it. Hang on one second. Uh, They're working the next on one. computers. The, the next one. There, that girl right there. That oh. girl right there is the... Fa oh, go back. Go I'm back. going back. That girl, that girl, that girl right there uh, at one side is the fastest one-wheel motorcycle Guinness Book of World Records champion, Catelyn uh, Holtz. Uh, and her father, her great-granduncle, invented an automobile back before Henry Ford even existed. Really? Okay, so that's pretty yeah, neat. Yeah. And uh, so this is my idea. We can unite if we unite and stop fighting and stop hating. Well, Excuse that's me, everybody. a big thing. We'll do a lot better. This hatred. And then this is kill. It really hurts me. I can't stand it. This is the website mead twenty twenty four dot org. You can keep going past this. Listen, I give you, I give yeah. you kudos for trying. No matter what and, they think about it oh, in Santa oh, my Cruz. Presidential campaign. My presidential campaign was designed so that all the kids keep the money. You know how you donate millions of dollars to the to the and and, and they put it in their pocket. My yeah, campaign the like kids, Trump did. My campaign the, my campaign, the kids keep all the money and we're gonna throw some climate parties. You can go past this, R S V P and uh and get the money that you send. Oh, there's also a game there for kids on my uh Presidential website, they can collect points and pass out uh, petitions, and they get points in the game. So I got the Laura Croft uh, game thing going there. Go ahead. I tried to make a fun site, fun presentation. Okay, now yeah, this it is, is a fun uh, presentation. The, this is how the kids make money. So that's actually there. If you know a youth center where the kids could make 20 to 50 bucks an hour, you could have them help a climate, the first climate-focused presidential candidate get elected, maybe. And then here's a business card and the honesty party and all that. And you can go ahead and go buy that. Well, I think we've done I, enough of a commercial. I like it, the honesty party. I think it could oh, take yeah. off, but uh, the problem oh, yeah. is I how many people Democrat. are really honest. I could not be a Democrat. <laughs> I could not be a Democrat. I don't care if they say social, dem whatever you they call it. You could be them. the honesty. I, but I you be, like Chick and Anna. Yeah, I could be a Republican before I could be a Democrat. But you and, like Chank and Anna. It doesn't make sense. You like Democratic values. You're lying. All uh, right. Uh, You're full of values. shit. You could be a Republican. Bullshit. Progressive values. Progressive values. Now, yeah. I'm a lab guy. Well, there's no I'm progressive Republican. I am Marf. a science guy. And Where's this is barf? Zero Emission Synthetic. And uh, I hope you can stop on this one here because this is kind of the key of it all. Um, back, back in 2006, 2007, one of my friends who worked for Genentech, she was a molecule manager. And All she right, said, let me go, now back. go ahead and hit, hit back. You're okay, controlling so me. Don't touch <laughs> Right here, right here, right here. So she was a molecule manager for Genentech, and we used to drink beers together overlooking the ocean. She goes, Craig, <laughs> oil, oil was 150 a barrel. I'm uh, going three, back, three. don't worry. There you go. And um, oil was 150 a barrel. And uh, she says, Craig, you're a smart guy. Why don't you invent a molecule that solves the world's energy problems? And I've worked on big projects like this, but I said, okay, I, okay. okay. And I can write chemical formulas. 
So I went to uh, NASA, my NASA physicist guys. I went to uh, a friend of mine, Stanford Physics Nanotechnology, another guy at the White Sands Missile Range, and another guy, PhD chemist. Together, <laughs> we formulated five compounds. Three of them are zero emission. That means there's no hy- hydrocarbons. And we could power, you can let it go. We could power ships with these fuels. <laughs> Click. We could, I'm we having power ships fun. With these fuels. I'm sorry. Cars, <laughs> trains, Whoa. Airplanes. You see that though? Look how, look at all that cargo. Oh my God. The exponential we, we, growth. We, 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 you, can, you can use this fuel to drive a Tesla. You don't need lithium. So in other words, we don't have to mine our way out of this. Well, we don't we'll have, need that's lithium. a whole show. You, 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 and we don't have time for now, that. What's this? This is a desalination. This is a desalination plant which produces offshore dead zones. That fuel, when it oxidizes, produces ample water for urban and 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 agricultural rural use. Here's the. I uh, like uh, that. Uh, that. It's ugly, but it it's functional. This is the energy uh, density of the fuels we invented versus gasoline, methane, diesel, everything. All right. So that's in this slide. You yeah. might want to just sit there for a second if people want to zoom yeah, in. I see it. And look at the energy density we'll and the cost per MMBQ. This Very is a much. transmission. Whoops. That's okay. Iowa the Energy Center, huh? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the no, next, this is good. The next slide, the next oh. slide shows... The transmission costs, instead of trying to build out the grid with copper or aluminum, if we build out the grid using, we already have 60,000 miles of pipeline that can transport that fuel, the zero emission sin fuel. It can right. run coal-fired, uh, uh, fire, gas-fired plants, coal-fired plants, and and uh, t- the transmission is one-eighth the cost per megawatt mile over copper. So we can pump this stuff anywhere in the country and run your car, run your factory, uh, uh, run your train. It'll work in airplanes. It's already been in outer space. This is an example of a kilowatt cube that uh, myself and electrical engineers design. You can put in your home and have a zero emission home. It's part of a microgrid design. So your you name is on that. On. Is your name on that? And then we have oh, this is oh yeah. Go go, go to the next one. I'm looking at it. Silent zero emission oh, okay. operation, paralleling switch gear. And this is something that you and a who worked on. Well, go back to it. Let's let's look at it. Yeah. Okay. Once we had, here's how this was developed. Do you like you have uh, your fingers in a lot of pots? Okay, I'll 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 put my hands down. You should have just smacked my hands, Sandy. No, I said you have your fingers in a lot of pots, meaning you're in a lot of different things. A lot. Go back. Go back. Okay, I'm right on. here, right here. All right. So, all right. So once in 06, 07, we started developing a fuels. In 08, 09, the chemists confirmed my formulas were correct. And the way it works is you have to put a certain amount of energy in, a certain amount of feedstocks in. Mm-hmm. Uh, it keeps changing. And, and, and to get what you expect, and there's always waste heat and sometimes some byproducts. You want to make sure you're not producing hazmat. You want to make sure your byproducts are harmonious you know with the environment that we have to live in you know that's one of the problems with nuclear energy right the hazmat is not harmonious Mm-mm. and so we got all that done in 08 09 that was right when the crash happened mm-hmm. and we were sitting around between 09 2010 2011 and i said how will this be applied to a microgrid mm-hmm. and so we sat with some electrical engineers i've developed systems for the nuclear sector it's not hard to look at load balancing basically if a home can pull about 20 kw in the morning when the water heater's going, right. the coffee pot's going, all the shit's going. If you can pull 20 kW for an hour or two, uh, you can survive through the day. So the units are designed to pull between. If you're really off grid, you can go with 5 kW. You know, if you're if you're um, if you're uh, prudent with your power. But if you if you want, we can build these to 20 k, 50 kW, 100 kW, so that you could power <laughs> a small factory or an office. Now, if someone wants to look at some of the projects we have done, people on our team have done, there's that slide. You might want to leave that there so people can zoom in. And and Andy Constantis, one of the key members from the Army Corps of Engineers, is on our team. Uh-huh. Oh, this is Rod. He's one of the guys on our team. Rod rebuilt Germany after World War II. He was D-Day plus Rod four. rebuilt He's also Germany. An artist. He's also an artist uh, there. That's something Rod's carved. 
And How old is Rod that he b rebuilt he, Germany after World War II? He, he, he's gone now. He he, he passed oh, the day before Michael Oh, this is an Michael old Jackson. picture. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, he, he died Hi, the Rod. day before Michael Jackson. Hi, he Rod. Died. He was a great magic, a magic guy, that guy. Wow, look and at that this is what the picture. Planet, this is the planet that we want to have, right? I mean, let's get let's all agree on one thing. We all want to have a planet that looks more like this than like a wasteland. I hope we all agree on that. Right? Yeah, we do. We, we all, all agree. agree. I think, okay. And here's some horses. Beautiful. Uh, drinking a nice, tranquil lake. We'd like it if the lake was not polluted, right? I think we all agree. We would like wild horses to drink from lakes that are not polluted. So we can agree on that. There mm -hmm. are some things we can agree on. And then this, uh, this girl here is one of the most famous medics in the world. I and saw she, this picture. She shows, yeah. She's a very loving, uh, it's a very uh, tragic situation. She shows that there are some things we have a difficult time agreeing upon. And now what? this is back to the beginning. The point of, the point of all of this is the technologies are here to, to get our way, to get out of this uh, predicament, as yeah. Simon McPherson calls it, predicament. There are technologies. He is right. And Paul Beckwith did some measurement. We may experience some global dimming issues as we reduce CO2 emissions and things like that. He is right. Paul Beckwith said many things. You know, we got to do this. Beckwith is a very studied man. He's got a lot of data. And let's agree that he brings up concepts of the bar stool where you take care of this problem or this series of problems, this problem, whether it's solar radiation management, which is geoengineering, you know, mm -hmm. but I'd rather have rather have coal and soot up in the atmosphere than a fried planet, okay? Um, That's going to fry rain, the planet. Like it's going to well, fry the planet. Well, the point is, I would like to, I would like us to both uh, pull the CO2 out of the atmosphere, and I believe we can do that. We can, without big machines, we can do it naturally. Nature does it naturally. We can do it naturally. And we can make the Mauna Loa graph go down, the Keeling curve go down, using the right technology. All that technology is described at mead 2024 Dot org. Okay. Interesting shit. <laughs> I really, I, I, I liked, we're going on an hour and that's usually my, uh, my sit ability, but, um, let's see what's going on in the chat. Let's have some interaction. Hi, human. Human says, um, no matter what we are doomed and the nuclear will morph life after we leave the planet. That's a, yeah, we see, I see a lot of that um that the destruction that's going to happen and then 200 how many nuclear plants 250 450 400 no 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 there's 16 there's 16 1600 nuclear facilities like hanford Ooh. is not a nuclear generating station. and there's 450 i think it's 435 or something like that uh actually generating stations and he that that that, that uh visitor is absolutely right if we don't get our shit together and sequester all that spent fuel and, and get rid of them. Get rid of the whole enriched uranium cycle. Okay. But I would agree with them. But if we could unite and clean that hazmat up, and I should think that should be a primary objective right. of the green. I haven't heard AOC talking about that, but go ahead, Sandy. What, 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 what else you got in that? In the oh, chat? the only way. Hi, old sage Joe. The only way to get that nice planet is to eliminate people. Hmm. That's a I ham bone favorite ones. That's a ham bone philosophy that it's difficult for me to argue with, uh, but I am going to do so. And I think that when that big population spike goes up and comes crashing down, if we have sequestered that nuclear fuel, then it's possible 10 million, 10,000, 100, you know, 1 million, a billion, I don't know, people might make a better planet. <sighs> Well, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's just that way. I have a couple of favorites. I said, oh, Rich had said earlier in the show, um, all right, another non-breeder. <laughs> so that was, uh, and John D., Extinction Rebellion UK activist got let off for smashing Barclay Bank windows. Yeah, that was great. I saw that on Twitter. I was really happy to see that. And Oh, here's a question would be interested in what Linux distributions Craig did. That okay, well, John first D. off, 
I grabbed the, I, I, well, when I decided on, I, I'd already been writing software since 79. I knew Unix. I kind of left Linux alone. And then in, in 2010, I had, I was always servicing window clients. So I always had to have a Windows machine. You now the business clients have Windows. That's just Was that bad. when you worked in the and, law firm? Uh, well, actually, the law firm originally was, well, I was working there before Microsoft was even born, but that's, and then, then gradually they did go into Microsoft. See, we all have uh, years yeah. of work history on this yeah. channel. Uh, <laughs> but going back to Linux in 2010, 2011, uh, I, I decided I was going to go back into software and I was loading all my compilers in and just rebuilding what's like a production environment. Mm -hmm. And I had a crash, a Windows crash. And I just said, you know what? I'm just done. If I'm going to go ahead and go back and get out of energy, get out of renewables, go back in, I want to go ahead and just, just build my own Linux distribution, find out what's out there. So I, I grabbed about 20 different kernel packages with libraries, okay, from uh, Red Hat, which is really big but really slow. Uh, I looked at the Ubuntu series. I, I don't want to nerd out here. But I found one that had a very small, tight, fast kernel. It's called Tiny Core. Mm -hmm. And uh, I highly suggest people who want a fast Linux distribution grab that little thing. And then what I did was I told the guys at Tiny Core, you don't have the menus that an office environment needs. Uh, people are trying to click and cobble this together. It's real clumsy that way. But it runs real fast. So what I did was I built an entire environment around it that originally was called PocketRocketLinux.com because it ran so fast. And then I got, I ran, I, it, but that was still a little bloated for me. And then I trimmed it down and now it's at damnfastlinux.org or .com, I forget. And so you can well, go John down. John D., there. I hope that really awesome. uh, answered your question. I got another good one. Here, this is Void is saying, Void is saying, ying, 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 Drew. Uh, Craig, can you stop the automatic audio on your Mead 2024 site? How can I look for links to find out what your fuel secret is with loud, blaring sound I don't want to listen to? So that's a request. To make your your site more friendly, what do you think? Did you freeze? No, but if I sit here long enough, you think I did, right? So you're good. Anyway, at it. they're right. They are right. I have some friends. About uh, one out of four abhors it. One out of four doesn't like it, in which it wasn't there. One out of four tolerates it one out of four likes it right and so what i have to do and they, they're right i should I put a mute button on there and up in yeah. the corner at a thing so that once you click that you have to unclick it in order to hear anything i could do that. right i haven't that done probably it. I haven't would done be it helpful well. if he's asking maybe other people and then you could get more people onto your oh, site yeah, absolutely. to hear absolutely. your voice and 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 um here was, oh, this was a good one. This was a good one, Craig. Besides all the physical hurdles to somehow overcome human survival, just isn't very profitable. Mm. Oh, that's not true. I did a white paper for the United Nations that was entitled How to Accelerate the Global Transition to Renewable Energy by Making it More <laughs> Profitable. In fact, if you go to the Paris Climate Accord website, my website, it describes how mayors can oh, yeah. uh, uh, get bonds for their cities and become part of this revolution. Now, unfortunately, all this, a lot of this was designed back in the mid, to, you know, early 2000s. As we all know, in Michael Moore's film Revealed, if every mayor of every city started m buying wind and solar and everything, we would mine the planet to death. Yeah. We would. Okay, there you go. And right now, we, might, we would destroy this place. We would not make the objective, which is creating that green planet. So the solution has to be to produce a synthetic fuel that we don't have to mine that can run very small microgrids for villages, communities, and even urban environments and large factories and things. But the fuel does not have to be dug up like oil. we got to dig for the liquid for the fuel. And it has to be synthesized. You synthesize fuel with electricity. And that means, how are you going to make that electricity? If you're not going to do it with wind, you're not going to do it with solar, 
And hydroelectric, I don't like, because we know what that does to fish runs. Geothermal is a good alternative. There's lots of it around the planet. Ask anyone who studies volcanoes. But, and here's the big question. If we had a radioactive isotope that had a short half-life, first thing, so that if there was an accident, it didn't wipe out an area for thousands of years, but like okay. maybe 10 or 20 years. And second criteria, if the reactor was at least 1,000 miles from any human city or, you know, so that, and, and if the reactor was at sea and had a problem, it was dropped to the bottom of the ocean in a cast. Right. In a cast. We know those casts can go for anywhere from 25 to 100 years before they rot and break. So what we want is a radioactive isotope that has a half-life that's less than that. So when it finally does leak into the ocean, hmm. it is inert. It's not radioactive. God. Now, theoretically, theoretically, if we had that, it's not radioactive. If we had that kind of a system and we had 1,000 or 10,000 of these reactors at sea, we could synthesize from seawater. We could pull CO2 or uh, 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 carbonic acid out of the ocean because it's very concentrated in the ocean compared to the atmosphere. It's easier to pull carbonic acid out of water than it is out of the atmosphere. It's a lot deeper. And you're processing all that water to make your synthetic fuel. Okay. Then just like uh, tanker mm. ships get oil in a port and take it to your port in right. Long Beach or, or – okay. They can bring in zero emission synthetic fuel and the reactors are at least a thousand miles at sea. There's no leakage, no radiation. If there's a problem, you pull the pin, the thing goes to the bottom of the ocean and then in 50 or 100 years, it's an inert puddle. That's nothing. And that would be one way. There are other ways. But that would be one way to give us zero emission fuel, plenty of water, which is what happens when you oxidize zero emission fuel and put the power generation in a safe place far from humanity. I do not believe reactors belong near I, I don't Does that like them at all, but this is, I'm giving, you know, you the floor. I've got some um, other ones. Um, everybody's, ha I, I, I highlighted some. Uh, Gazer, Gazer, people will only get the climate crisis when the food start becoming scarce, then ask why. But after that, then Rick Larson, who is a permaculture expert, I mean, he's like got a, plant, a channel. And um, he said, <clears throat> uh, he said, I don't think so. Making renewable energy a profit center for the financial sector makes it unaffordable and hoping hoping for the best is not a good idea. Prepare yourselves. You can die miserably hungry and all that. Or you can plant a garden and avoid at least going hungry for a while. So there's three um, comments in that little thread. That um, Let's start with the first one. The and this goes crisis. back to what we were talking about. The All profit right. the profit potential. Oh, not for, the... Okay, wait, not that one. Okay, the, the profit potential. And the design that's uh, purported both at the Paris, Accord to Paris.org I run, and at the Mead 2024 site, the profit mechanism, the structure is that communities like let's say Dallas or let's say uh, Littleton, Colorado or wherever, the communities own a bond that funds a, let's say a reactor that's producing synthetic fuel. That means they own that fuel. And just like Alaska or just like Norway pays a royalty to their citizens, yep. these people now have income. In other words, that city is creating a UBI. You may be aware that Los Angeles is doing a UBI experiment. Uh, wow. Stockton just got done doing one that was very successful. California. So it is true. It is true that if the big boys own all this stuff, that we always oh, stuck hind kit or get nothing. But yeah. uh, the other side, if we restructure those balance sheets, the people in those communities can get that revenue. So go ahead. Oh, what else was, what was the other two? Um... I was talking, well, Rick, 
is is uh, the permaculture. And he does make a good comment, and I agree with him about hoping for the best is not a good idea. Prepare yourselves. You can die miserably hungry and all that, or you can plant a garden and avoid at least going hungry for a while. And you know, that leads me to, to ask you, do you belong to a community garden or do you have a, a, any kind of mechanism to actually plant on your um, your boat? Uh, it's funny you should mention that. About a year ago, I started making mulch. You know, I be, I used to throw the, I, I'll be honest, I threw the grapefruit rinds and everything away. And about a year ago, I started doing, I have two coolers up on deck. And I have uh, probably about, uh, over the course of the year, maybe 30 or 40 pounds of stuff that I need to mix with potting soil at this right. point. You know what I mean? That, that, that stuff, that kind of stuff. And uh, I do intend to plant. Oh, last year, I had some nice, uh, just to see if I could grow stuff out here in the salt air, I could. I had some nice, tall, uh, green plants. Yeah. That, uh, anyway, they got about they got about two feet tall really fast. And I was going, ooh, this is working good. And then stupid, stupid, best laid plant of mice and men. Who would pick up the wrong container, the one with the salt water in it? And what do you think happens when you pour salt water on what do you think happens? How does that work out? It doesn't work out. <laughs> They're having so much fun in the chat. <laughs> Somebody asked your mama, who is this guy? Maybe he wants to go to Mars. Are you, you're not one of those techno um, Mars people. <laughs> I, I got a telescope at age six. I got a microscope at age eight. I love looking at stars from here. But do you okay. want to go to Mars? <laughs> that was the question. <laughs> Not really. Okay. No. Okay. Oh, I like, I like Void, it. I like you had a question. What was your comment? There was another comment by Void. He was um, going to, I think, um, volunteer. You, he personally volunteers to to um, mine the radioactive isotope. We're going backwards to that. Oh, Friday night. It is Friday night, guys. We should play out some music while we while we go through some more comments. Everybody's having a good time in the chat. Um, I think. <laughs> Why not, right? All right. Oh, oh, wait, wait. What? I open what? This what? I open I open this up. I open this up. <laughs> this is uh I think I think we've come to the drink smoke ice cream break just for a second uh, not not for too long but just like you know a little breather is that okay yeah put the background music on because that's the ending music we're going out we're going over my hour uh you know i can sit okay limit but uh oh <laughs> have you debated biden <laughs> i got a, a funny crew too <laughs> I love you all out there in in, in uh I, I love in Joe my Biden. Chat. Let's all agree. Let's agree that Joe <laughs> Biden is better than the other guy. Okay, that that I think we we stepped up a level with Biden. <laughs> Maybe not not as high as we want to be, but who's ever as high as they uh, want to be? I don't. Know. I thought you were you. This has been entertaining. I've had a good time. Everybody's had a good time. I liked your your presentation. It was fun. Um. Raza, love is the constant gardener. Get busy planting, reproach your soul. Yeah, it snowed, though. I have to say about the garden. We, you know, we have a gardening project going on here that I'm getting people's, and I am getting all the files of people's gardens all over. And uh, I'm going to make a trilogy. So we're going to have the May, wherever it is in the world, you know, the May, uh, and then the... The, the height of the growing season and then the harvest season at least northeast or in, in in and then we'll match with other countries so whoever I, i'm already getting the pictures it's really great we're having a really nice positive thing going on here and uh everybody that that's following and is with us is is really um awesome part of this little family experiment thing here oh. i love it i like it I definitely void. You are um, immortal and outside the universe. I definitely have interesting people 
<laughs> no, we do because we have a team. And Jennifer, we put the you put the put the shades on. Oh, you know, Kate? you know, I don't want to say this. I don't want to say this, Andy. But you know, half your viewers want to date Jennifer. You know that, right? <laughs> I'm just, date, I'm just saying. All right, just we're saying. getting you're, you're getting saying. into silly dumb. K uh, Kishwari Kate, Kemishwari Kate is lovely, by the way. I work in my community to wait to help. Oh, to help um, turn neglected public schools into food forests, food corridors, and edible landscape. Also, getting the local government involved. Help, uh, involved helps to add fruit trees and uh, bring water. It's beautiful, beautiful things that 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 people do. You know, it is, and uh, I'm happy you're all here. So, what do you have to say? We're an hour and 19 minutes, buddy. That's a long show for me. What would you like to? What would? What would you like to? Uh, May we all end the unite. show with. May, may we all. May unite. we all inside the camp. May we all. May we all unite and <laughs> save our only planet. That that there it is. There it is. Yeah, right there. that's it. That's, that's it. So that's no matter what, we how kooky unite. we are, it, it it's we had a fun Friday night. I've enjoyed it, and uh, we want to save the planet. All right, guys. Thank you so much for coming on a Friday night with us. We are on opposite coasts. He's on the water on the west coast, and I'm in the country on the east coast. And uh, that's it. That's all she wrote. Thank you. All Thank right. You, Sandy. Peace out, everybody. Thank you for coming. And uh, oh, Gazer said, I, I'll take the last comment. I feel like I could just pop in for coffee sandy but thousands of miles away yeah that's what we are we're just we're hanging out together and uh i like interesting people <laughs> all right peace out guys music back on and we are going to dance it out